We have David Grasso, anchor of Bold. All right, it's been a minute. Glad to have it you. It has been a minute. Always great to be here, though, Dr. Richie. Give it to me. Good to have you, my dear brother. All right, David. We're going to chop it up about not only mass shootings in America, but the political response specifically contextualized through conservative response. I don't want to presume what you know, believe about that dynamic. So I will allow you to tell us and then opine from there. Sure. Well, you know, I think in Texas, there's definitely a problem with political extremism. I think that's something that we could agree with. I mean, a lot of people on the right would think that as well. And I think definitely I'm not here representing myself as a, you know, hardcore Christian, but I consider myself Christian. And, you know, responding to something tragic like the shooting with religious Bible verses is probably not the best look for lawmakers, you know, especially, uh, you know, Jesus always said, turn the other cheek. You know, he probably wouldn't have been pro gun. But that's not very convenient for today's uh, narrative. You know, I think that we need to exhibit more sensitivity when it comes to these events. Uh, you know, whether you're liberal or conservative, sensitivity is what's needed, not, hey, it's supposed to be like this or, oh, you know, whatever. And I think it comes off as careless and really insensitive. I want to say this because I do agree with your point uh, that these responses are typically inappropriate. Given the fact that they are lawmakers, they are in the business of developing, creating, and implementing policy. But let me read something that I thought was quite fascinating. So, a Republican out of Texas who represents that area, right? Uh, he goes on record and basically says, I know people who want to make this political, but prayers are important and they're powerful in the families who are devastated right now. That was Keith Self, who represents the third district of Texas. Okay. Now, what he's trying to do is dissuade anyone from holding him accountable to do his damn job, which is to present policy um, dynamics that solve problems that protect people. He doesn't want to have that conversation because that conversation is not popular. But let's be very clear, dear brother. Um, those who are in position of legislative power, they show you what they care about based on what they're willing to either create in legislation or vote on, right? It doesn't require that it be something that everybody else cares about. Let me give an example. When there was uh, this sentiment and this uh, narrative that Donald Trump stole, that Donald Trump had the election stolen from him. Most Republicans didn't even believe it. Tucker Carlson never believed it. Uh, Hannity really doesn't believe it. People don't believe it, all right? They acted like they believed it. but. The lawmakers, even the one who just went on record and said, pray, not legislate. All of these lawmakers, dear brother, decided to show they cared by presenting legislation based on a lie. And they all knew it was a lie, right? Nobody said, hey, if people want to commit voter fraud, they're going to commit voter fraud anyway. You need to just pray that everything works out. Nobody said that. Everybody decided to engage in a legislative battle. Why do you think there is no legislative concern at all? as it relates to dynamics of gun violence in America. And the reality is also most Americans agree with major concepts like red flag laws or reform so that there's a restriction with weapons that have the highest carnage rate, etc. Why aren't these things being adopted by conservatives? Well, first, Dr. Richie, let's talk about Texas. So Texas okay. has a one party problem, right? And no matter what party is in charge, if you go on unchecked for that long, you're gonna be an arrogant party because there really is no competition. Number two, the Texas legislature only meets every two years. Now, I had the unique experience of being a, a journalist in West Texas focused on political corruption. And I can tell you, it's a real problem in Texas. We've seen this with guns, we've seen this with the grid, and sure, I am a low tax, small government proponent, but at a certain point, you can't have no government. So there's a obviously, you know, an equilibrium for all of these issues. The reason why we don't see a lot of legislation in Texas period is again, they go to session every two years. That beautiful capital in Austin basically sits unused. And at the national level, I think you know the answer to that, and a lot of the viewers will know the answer to that. It has a lot to do with the National Rifle Association. And really, the National Rifle Association, even for people who own guns, 
I do not own a gun personally, but my brother is a gun enthusiast. He has stopped paying his NRA dues because he feels that they do not represent most gun owners views. And we have a definite problem with that in Washington, especially we've seen with the NRA cozying up to Russia in recent years, you know, um, and really operating fundamentally as a slush fund. And unfortunately, while it's very weird that the NRA operates as a slush fund, we all ultimately suffer because I feel there is a lot of room for common sense agreement on gun issues. Now, the research is not clear on whether these will actually work, but I think it's worth a try. Man, let me say this to you, dear brother. I, that's why I appreciate having you on the show. You and I may not agree on ideological principles all up and down the equator, and that's fine. Uh, but you do talk with some sense, okay? And let's highlight something your brother did, right? He said, okay, I'm gonna stop paying the NRA because they're not representing my values. I literally said that on this show last week. And I brought up a survey where it showed that NRA members, the majority of NRA members are for restricting gun sales as it relates to those who have been diagnosed with a mental health issue. They believe these things are common sense dynamics that should be applied to the everyday American or to the everyday person. So why, why? And you hit it, right? You say, well, it's because of the NRA, but it's not really the NRA. The NRA is kind of the front man. The NRA, they have become the de facto lobbying wing of gun manufacturers. And you have to look at what really has happened here, dear brother. There's a self-correction in the market called tort law. Of tort course. law, right, you, you know what I'm you know where I'm going. Tort law allows the public to hold companies accountable that may not be significantly regulated. Because if they make a product that leads to the death or harm of another human being, tort law can bring that company in court and hold them accountable to the safety protocols of their product. The only company in America that has its own law creating immunity to tort action is gun manufacturing industry. That's it. We literally have a special law that says you can't sue this manufacturer under tort law doctrine in this country. That eliminates the self regulatory dynamic that would be implemented by way of the public because courts are available to you as remedy. It also provides immunity for them to do whatever they choose to do. So the NRA is what the front man, the NRA is doing the bidding of the gun manufacturers contrary to the membership of the NRA at that. So your brother's a smart person. Do you think this ever changes brother? Do you think somehow the, the, the narrative goes back to common sense when we literally used to have um, Democrats and Republicans vote on gun reform in the United States? Well, I think there's a lot of misinformation around guns. So let's yeah. talk about guns without you know politicizing it. First of all, it's really important to mention that black Americans, uh, gay Americans and women are some of the fastest growing demographics of going out and buying guns right now, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe that law abiding citizens should have the right to buy a gun. Yet again, I do not own a gun, but I know a lot of people who do. Now, as what you're saying, there is a lot of room for common sense reform. Here's the problem, it all gets politicized. It goes from no guns on one side to anyone can have a gun. And a lot of issues are a lot more complicated than that. Even the assault rifle ban, my brother always goes on and on about assault rifles, how a lot of times we ban things that look scary. And that's not necessarily a good gauge of what is actually dangerous to the public. You know, high capacity magazines are maybe a better way of looking at, you know, the damage that can be done. And perhaps, and again, before this segment, I sat. And I really tried to study what this data says. And Dr. Ritchie, the data is very unclear on all of this. But I think it's safe to assume if we did something about high capacity magazines, perhaps the lethality of these mass you know, shooting events would be less. And I think that is worth a try. Uh, red flag laws, as you said, keeping yep. guns out of the mentally ill. You know, also uh, per, do, requiring background checks for private sales. Cause right now, right now you and I can decide to exchange money for guns yep. and there is no record of it. That's so correct. these are all, these are all loopholes that could probably be closed that the majority of Americans, even you'd be shocked at the level of approval among Republicans and as you say, NRA members. So clearly this is a democracy, the people want this. We're tired of living in fear. Every time we go out into a 
public were worried about this. You know, yeah. I grew up in Orlando, Florida. I used to go to a place called Pulse Nightclub, right? And mm-hmm. look what happened there. Now everybody knows that name. So, yeah. you know, we're all slightly tired of this. And I think just because you're a conservative or a liberal has nothing to do with it. This is about pragmatism. And let me say this to your point, because you make an excellent one. Uh, this really is not a Dem versus Republican issue. It's really not. Think about it. The vast majority of Democrats and Republicans agree on most of this stuff. It only gets separated when you go to DC. When you go to DC, all of a sudden, there's this partisan contrast. So let me read the data. Um, a poll by the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy and the Associated Press um, cites 71%. 71% of Americans say gun laws should be stricter, all right? Then you have the public policy polling survey that says 83% of gun owners support expanding background checks. That also includes 72% of current NRA members, they support background checks. Also, morning consult and political, 88% of respondents support universal background checks. 81% say they support making private gun sales and those loopholes. Uh, making them subject to background checks. Once again, vast majority, Democrats, Republicans, independent, black, white, brown, male, female. The vast majority of every demographic believes in these things, these items right here. And they have done so for 12 years straight. You don't have a law yet federally. When is this going to change, dear brother? These are policies that may have a cause and effect um, relationship and actually decrease carnage as we see it moving forward. But if we legislate nothing, we can expect absolutely nothing to change. Well, I think you make a good point though, Dr. Richie, which is torts are always a great way to cause change. Because yeah. right now, the legislative branch of our government is really subject to gridlock. But if you hold people accountable for their behavior, whether it's saying, you know, certain things on television or, you know, not storing your gun properly and your kid grabs it and causes a mass shooting, you know, if there were legal ramifications for all of this, our world might be dramatically different. All right, so I'm gonna ask you now, I'm gonna put you on the spot, brother. Will you agree with me and call for the overturning of the federal law that gives gun manufacturers complete immunity from tort law action? I I, I honestly don't know whether that's the solution. I'm open to it, but I'm not gonna right. sit here and misrepresent my opinion. Okay, so. all right. So next time I want you, when you come back on the show, I want you to have a well-researched opinion about that because I think that's going to get us the action we need sooner than waiting on Congress to pass a bill about guns. I think simply overturning that law may be helpful, all right? I appreciate you being on the show always, dear brother. Thank you, sir.